wherever we go. And it's, and it's always good to go back and look at basics and see what uh, a revival is about and, and understand it so we have a better understanding so that we can all carry revival into our families, into our uh, friends and, and wherever we go that Amen. we all carry revival. Uh, that's something that's needed on the earth, a revival. People need uh, to come alive in Christ. Uh, you know, uh, Paul wrote in uh, Philippians chapter 3 uh, that he wanted to know Christ. And uh, that comes from faith and love. Uh, it takes faith to know Christ. And your faith is not going to be effective without love because faith works by love. So let's look at this, Sherry, to know the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians 3.10. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Okay. So this is a uh, core uh, verse for, for this message today. It's to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, but also be conformed to uh, participate in his suffering a fellowship of his suffering, mm. that we might know him. And that's what revival is about. Uh, revival is about being restored to life, coming alive. And uh, we think about it in biblical terms, it's coming uh, restored to God's original purpose uh, for each of our lives. God has a purpose for you, mm. and, and we need to come alive to that purpose. That's our real identity. That's our spiritual identity. That's who we are. That's our DNA uh, that we come alive. And the way to do that is that we lay down our lives. So what, what Paul wrote here is that uh, we, we uh, fellowship and participate in his suffering. Well, that's laying down our lives so that we can know God and his love. Uh, because love is critical here. It's, it's the very essence of revival, bringing us alive. Well, it's the goodness of God that uh, draws us to him. It's not fear, and we don't serve him out of fear. Uh, There's some people that serve gods, their gods, out of fear, but uh, we serve him because we love him. Amen. That, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Oh, hallelujah, that I can be conformed to his image so that I can be like him. So if you want to carry these revival fires, uh, we need to recognize what that actually, what that means, what that entails. And the way the Bible works is that when it gives a precedent, uh, it's something very important. And uh, the first time revive is mentioned, it's mentioned in Genesis. And so that's where we're going to look tonight. That's uh, the beginning place, is looking at revival. What, what does it mean? And uh, we see it in Genesis 45. And uh, we'll start with verse 7 because we're beginning to understand in this passage what revival looks like. Now, Joseph, we could say, well, he's a type, a uh, shadow and type of Christ mm -hmm. because he never sinned. Uh, and, and God sent him to bring life uh, to uh, his people. And, and that's what he did with Jesus. Or we could also look at Joseph as a revivalist. I, I, I'm here mm -hmm. to bring mm -hmm. life to Hallelujah. you. That's Hallelujah. What he says. That's what he says in Genesis 45, verse 7. So God sent me ahead of you. He's talking to his brothers mm -hmm. now. To ensure for you a remnant on the earth. You hear that, Jamie? And to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, jo Joseph was sent down to Egypt for a remnant and to bring people alive, to keep people alive, to preserve life, to bring Amen. forth the promise that Abraham, hallelujah. that was given to Abraham. And if it hadn't been for Joseph, that whole line might have been cut off right there. But God prepared Joseph. And that's how important revival is. 
Uh, mm. We've got to bring forth the promises of God. God has promises That's that right. He that He gives lots of people. All the people have promises. Amen. Amen. And, and it's our role to help bring that forth. Okay, Sherry. Well, and I just heard from the Spirit of God that He is preparing each one of us as revivalists to bring revival and life to those in our family, to those in the marketplace, those in the workplace. Uh, he is bringing, uh, he's he's preparing us uh, as revivalists. Okay, that's Amen. good. Okay, now I, I want to skip down to verse 21, still in 40, Genesis 45. We're going to look at three different passages here in Genesis 45. This is just a type of revival, and it's the first time it's mentioned uh, in the Word of God. So it sets a precedent. This is the way that revival is always going to happen beyond this. Now, God may add to the precedent, mm -hmm. uh, but he's not going to take away. And so that's why it's important for us to look at this. And we're going to see in, in just a moment here in Genesis 45, we're going to see a reference. This is the first reference in the, the Bible to revive. And so let's look at these verses, and I want to explain them, starting with verse 21. Joseph gave them wagons and gave them provisions for their journey. To each of them, he gave changes of garments, but to Benjamin, he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of garments. Okay, so Joseph has revealed himself to his uh, brothers, and he has, he's sending them back uh, to get his father and their uh, family and the belongings and bring them down to Egypt. That's what's going on here. But there's some very interesting things, and these are symbols of things to come. And first of all, uh, Joseph has one full brother. His name is Benjamin, and he has 10 uh, half-brothers. And uh, this is real important because the message tonight is about being fully committed, mm, fully committed, hallelujah. laying down your life so that you can know God and his love. And by that, you will be changed. And, that, and uh, mm -hmm. so we're looking in this series, Revival and Reformation. Revival uh, is being brought back to God's purpose, being given life. And Reformation is changing the form and to an improved form. So we're moving to mm -hmm. a higher form. And, and we're going to see that both of these are uh, related. Now, in, in history... We know that Martin Luther was called a reformist. Uh, he had uh, read the Bible and he saw many of the ways that uh, that the church of that day were, were missing the Bible. And so he set all of these uh, list of uh, theses on a piece of paper, put them on the door uh, of a church building, I would say. And uh, he was known as a reformist because he's wanting to improve uh, the procedures mm. going on in the church in his day. That's a reformist. That's what a reformist is. He's going to change the form, but improve it. And so both of these things go together, revival and reform. But tonight we're talking about revival. And the way to have real revival is uh, a full commitment. Now, what I want you to see in these verses Sherry just read, Joseph has some half brothers they're not fully committed and he has a full brother and that's benjamin now to the half brothers oh this is so symbolic mm -hmm. and to the half brothers he gives a change of garment so there's a lot of people that come up uh to the preacher and they shake his hand and they say they're born again christians and they're and they're believers and so mm -hmm. they, they change their garments. They change their label. Oh, I was a sinner. Now I'm a Christian. And now I'm a new believer. And that's the half-brothers. See, they're not fully committed. Mm -hmm. They're the half-brothers. They just got a change of garments. But to Benjamin, this is the one, the full commitment, the full brother, uh, Joseph gave, what did he give? 300 pieces, pieces of, of silver. silver. Oh, 300. Now, three means divine. And and a uh, hundred means ten by ten, and and so that's that's the fullness of divine. And so silver means resurrection, redemption, redemption. I'm sorry, redemption. And, and so 
this is a symbol of his full brother, a full change on the inside, silver, redemption, uh, the three, divine, divine redemption, Benjamin. So Benjamin is a type of a believer who is fully committed to Christ. Amen. And he gives him five, five changes, changes of, of garments. garments. Five I means mean grace. grace. Hallelujah. So there's a big difference between somebody half sold out and somebody fully sold, sold out, out in revival. Amen. And, and there's Amen. a lot. Of, and you look at the numbers here, 10 to 1. 10 are just half sold out and one fully sold out. That's Hallelujah. what that's Hallelujah. what it's a symbol of. Now I want to drop down to uh, some other verses still in Genesis 45. We're looking at the concept of revival. This is the first time it's mentioned. So this is setting a precedent of how it works. And I'm just pulling out a few highlights. Mm -hmm. okay, Sherry. Then they went up what from verse, Egypt I'm in verse 25 okay. through 28. Okay. Then they went up from Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to their father, Jacob. And they told him saying, Joseph is still alive. And indeed he is a ruler over the land of Egypt. He's, ruler over the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he was stunned for he did not believe them. When they told him all the words of Joseph that he had spoken to them. And when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry them, then he, the spirit, uh, listen to this, the spirit of the father Jacob was revived. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Then Israel. Okay. He's changed from Jacob to Israel. Then Israel said, it is enough. My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Okay. Hallelujah. So the brothers, uh, the brothers of Joseph are, have been sent back to their father. And at this time he's called Jacob and, uh, uh, and so the Bible refers to him as Jacob. Jacob means deceiver. So he's in the old flesh, the old nature. Uh, but he's about to experience something. Oh, hallelujah. He's about hallelujah. to experience a revival. Oh, of being hallelujah. Revived in, his, in his spirit. Now, mm, they said something good, good, very good. important. And that he said, they said, uh, Joseph is alive. He's down there in Egypt. He's the ruler of Egypt. Now, let's just go back in time. When Joseph was a little boy, uh, let's say around 16 or so, uh, he had two dreams. Joseph was a seer. And at the, all of this time, he was a seer. He saw things in the spirit. And then he spoke out what he said. What, and, he, saw. what he saw. What he saw. Okay, now we know from 1 Samuel 9, 9, that in uh, earlier days, uh, the prophets were called seers. So seers are a subcategory of prophets. And, and so when he ruled over Egypt, that's what he said, I'm going to be a ruler. He saw it in dreams. He saw that he was uh, going to be a ruler and his brothers were going to bow down to him. He spoke it out. He spoke it out to his father and his mother, to his uh, uh, brothers. And his brothers, of course, hated him. Uh, his mother and father said uh, they pondered those things. They didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But he was a seer. He saw things to come in the spiritual realm. And then when it happened, when, it, uh, when he was raised up to be ruler over Egypt, then he sent his brothers back there to tell uh, the father that uh, he was now ruler over, he was the ruler, what he had prophesied, what he had told them, the prophetic words that he had given them. And, and so that's really an important point uh, that I want to make and go off uh, and, and give you some more background on it. But see, prophets and apostles lay foundation. That's Ephesians 2.20. Apostles and prophets are very important in revival. Now, why is that? I mean, well, because I mean, they're going to lay foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, when my spiritual father and Sherry's spiritual father, uh, Bob Terrell, uh, came here, he would come here many times over the years, and we would have meetings. And 
What was really interesting, he had so much wisdom. He could have preached and taught about um, so many yeah. different things, but he always either taught about love, love, or forgiveness. Our forgiveness. Am I amazing? I, I mean, that's that's just the way he operated. Uh, now we can we would sit him down in our home and have these long, extended uh, discussions about many, many different topics. But he was always focusing on love and forgiveness because that's what the foundation yes, is. Yes. The Hallelujah. foundation is love, love and, and forgiveness, forgiveness. And, and and a few other things. Uh, mm. Of course, we know from Hebrews what the foundation is, but it's just a few basic things. And, and that's what we saw in his life. And I see it in other uh, lives. And uh, a dear friend uh, uh, in Honduras who uh, was an mm. apostle there, uh, really, Sister Eleanor. Yeah, my spiritual mom. Uh, she, uh, you you follow her, her, we traveled with her over the years, and she would either teach about love, love or, or forgiveness. forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, see, apostles and prophets are going to lay foundation and love and forgiveness. Those are some of the fundamental no, the uh, basics, foundations. Amen. The basics uh, in Christianity and in uh, the kingdom. And, and so if we do not have, th this is really important, if we do not have the foundation laid, if we do not have a uh, foundation in our lives, we're going to get away from what? We're going to get away from things like love and forgiveness. And so we've got to have those things in our life. And so that's, we're mentioning prophets here, yeah. but we see in Ephesians, in Revelation, the, the church at Ephesus in uh, Revelation mm -hmm. 2, uh, they rejected apostles. Oh, it was clear. Oh, they said these are not apostles. They rejected apostles, yeah, yeah. and then they got away from love. And, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. Jesus said to them, you got to come back yeah. to your first love. Oh, come back come to your back first to love. love. Come back to love. And, and so in revival, oh, hallelujah, there's got to be some foundation laid there. There's a lot of people that can come up to the altar and cry and get up and not be changed and go out. Yeah. And, and there's a lot that can come down to the preacher and shake it, uh, his or her hand and, and not be changed. But they're yeah. saying they are, but they're going to change their garment. They're going to change their label. Oh, I was a sinner, but now I'm a... I'm a saint. Now I'm a Christian. But you've got to have that foundation in their lives, and, and, and there's got to be a change. And, and revival is about a change, a radical change that comes by the love of God, Amen. from the love of Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Woo! That's what Hallelujah. revival is. Don't think that you can just uh, put your name on a roll and say, oh, I, I belong mm -hmm. here. I'm a, I'm a member of this congregation and, and think that everything is okay. I'm talking about a sold-out life. Are you, oh, oh hallelujah, don't be a half-brother to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Be fully sold yeah. out to Jesus. And that's what hmm. we're looking mm -hmm. at tonight. It's so important. And uh, one of the things, you know, Moses gave us a, a lot of commandments, gave us 10 commandments and hundreds of regulations, gave us, you look at the prophets and uh, the, the law, you, you see it. But all of that is fulfilled in the love of God. And, and uh, amen. amen. I want to share to read a, a couple of uh, verses about that. Romans 13. Verses 8 through 10. Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. For this you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal. Those are you the shall commandments not, of Moses. Right. You shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, it is summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfillment of the law. We have to love our neighbor. And that are, that's sinners and saints. Sinners and saints. There may oh, be our neighbors. Yeah. There are probably more sinners around <laughs> me than there are saints. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just looking at the way they <laughs> they live. Yeah. That's okay. The truth. There, but there's another verse. One word. It's a love fulfills the law. Galatians. Galatians five fourteen. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. In the statement, 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, hallelujah. So can we keep the law? Well, we keep love. This is be mm -hmm. love your neighbor. The love, it's all mm -hmm. wrapped up. And so revival then is going to change us. We're going to love. Oh, We're hallelujah. going to become a disciple of Jesus. We're going to love. They will know us by our love. They don't know us by our our giftings or our abilities or our theology. Mm -hmm. It's by our love. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. This is this is such an important Amen. concept. I Amen. just want to take time and, and, and build on this. And you know, we, uh, uh, Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter one, everything else is vanity. Mm -hmm. If it's not love, it's all vanity. Oh wow. wow. All vanity. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want to think about, uh, let's see, I believe I have one on Peter, First uh, Peter. Let me see that. The word to love fervently. First Peter one twenty two. Since you have purified your souls in obedience to the truth for a sincere love of the brothers and sisters, fervently, that means fiery, that means on fire, love one another from the heart. Okay. So where is the love? It's in the heart. And it's going mm -hmm. to be a fervent love. This is not just uh, a, just a cold love. Uh, don't be lukewarm. Uh, mm -hmm. The Lord said, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I'm going to spit you out mm -hmm. if you're not on fire. But mm -hmm. on fire for what? On fire with love. Amen. And, and, Amen. And it's a love uh, that is unconditional. Uh, love your neighbor. Love your enemies. Yes. Pray, Ooh, pray hallelujah. for those who persecute you. Yeah, love. Bless those. This is a different kind of, of love we're talking about. Now, where does love come from? Well, I, I have a couple of verses uh, uh, that Romans 5.5 5 says that it comes from the Spirit of God. Now, this, so what we're doing here mm -hmm. is developing what is revival. Uh, mm -hmm. What is revival? Well, it it's about love. It's about being changed, radically changed by the love of God. And it, this love is not an emotion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to define it in, in right after this, but it's not an emotion. Now, emotions come out of love, but it the love of God is not an emotion. And it is poured into our heart by, the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. So how much of the Holy Spirit do you have? And, and there's a lot of places. See, we're, we're trying to uncover things that are not really revival and where there's not really love. And if they don't have apostles and prophets, they, then it's on shaky ground. And that's mm -hmm. the reason many people get away from love. And revival is about being changed radically by love. Now, the other, the other way that we get uh, the love of God is through the word of God. So we get the love mm -hmm. of God by the spirit, Romans 5, 5, and by the word of God. Uh, what's that? First Peter uh, 2, 5, that says uh, we are perfected. Our love is perfected. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. two ways. That we get love and one is by the spirit and the other is by love mm -hmm. now i do want to talk about the meaning of it which is the last verse i have but then we'll come back to some others probably well can i just uh interject okay. here sure. just for a second sure. when we began the mission in downtown athens um we we worked with the people uh the prostitutes the homeless the the mentally ill uh the um uh, i realized one day that i didn't have enough love i didn't have enough love to minister to those that would come and smoke crack cocaine in our bathroom and 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 bring in weapons and and didn't smell like us or act like us and and i just knew that I was lacking. I was lacking in what I needed to be able to minister uh, to those people and to bring life to those people. And so one day I, I asked the Lord, I said, 
uh, Lord, I need more of your love, more of your supernatural love operating in and through my life. In order to do what you have called us to do here at this mission, I need your love. And there was a supernatural experience that I had that day. I felt the fire of God go through, started at my head and went down through my whole body. He invaded, God invaded, God is love, and he invaded my whole being. And from that moment forward, I was able to love. I was able to love with his love. And that's why Freddie says it's not an emotion. Uh, it can lead to emotions, but it's not. It's an experience with the heavenly father himself who is love. And and so that's what he did. And, and, and I began to... Uh, be able to speak life to these people that came uh, through the door or on the streets, on the corner. I was able to, to, to speak life to them and bring life to them uh, because of the love of God. Okay. Now, uh, in, for, in John chapter 14, Jesus talked about uh, love and, and about being his disciples. And I'd like for you to read this. Here. John 14, 21 through 24. This is the meaning. This gives us the meaning of love. It's not just emotion. A lot of people just say, oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love people. I love the Lord. But but this puts something basic uh, with it, some, some conditions. Let's, let's read this. The one who has my commandments means seeks the will of God and keeps which means obeys the will of God. Them is he is the one who loves me. Okay, so what is love? It's not an emotion. Love comes mm, from mm. seeking God's will. Amen. And doing God's will. So if you're seeking God's oh, will hallelujah. and you're doing God's will, that's love. That's true Amen. love. Amen. That's God's love. And, and now emotion will come out of it. Like Sherry said, then, yeah. th then we began to love people. And, and so, yes, emotion came out of it, but it comes from seeking the will of God and doing the will of God. And that's in John 14. Amen. Then what? If anyone loves me, he will follow my word. Oh, by the word. See, I said there's two ways. Two ways that we get the love of God, and one is by the Spirit, and one is by the love, and then next verse. By the Word. By the Word, I'm sorry, by the Word. If anyone loves me, he will follow my word. The one who does not love me does not follow my word. Okay, so people out there are sinning, they may put on the new garment, they may put on a new label and say, oh, I'm Christian, I'm, I'm born again, believer, but if they're still sinning, they're not doing his will. They're not doing his word. Uh, it's important for us to do his will and his word. I'd like for mm -hmm. Sherry to read uh, a couple more verses. And, and one is uh, uh, about the new commandment that Jesus gave. He gave a new commandment, and mm -hmm. that commandment was John uh, 13. I'd like, uh, is that right? John 13, yeah. No, you go back no. a little bit. The new commandment, John 13. I'm sorry, I got to say it all um, John 13, 34 through 35. I am giving you a new commandment that you l love one another just as I have loved you. Oh, this is a higher level. This is a higher level of love. Amen. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. What else? That you also love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Okay, so here it is. Do we love one another? That is the expression of being mm -hmm, his disciple. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of people that don't love one another. There's a lot of people mm -hmm. that that's not a good witness as a disciple of Jesus. Right. He said, my disciples, they're going to love one another. Mm -hmm. And the whole world's going to know that they are my disciples. And, and uh, John four, uh, 17, we won't turn there. But this is what's really 
going to change the world when we love one another. It's Amen. the whole world is going to come to the kingdom when we truly love one another. Why is revival important? We It's about, about being radically changed by the love of God. I mean, and I that's mean. when we're going to change people's lives. Oh, it's not our theology. I know people that love to argue about theology. No, I love to argue about theology, but it's not about theology. What's going to win the world to Jesus mm -hmm. is love. And, and that's the reason we need to revive, uh, be revived, and, and then change the way we do things. And so love, and, and so this message uh, is is basic, uh, that, that you know these things, uh, but it's so important because if you want to change your family, if you want to change members of your family, how are you going to reach them? Are you about arguing about uh, what's true and what's not true and putting things down. No, it's about the love of God. I mean, they I mean, cannot resist, resist the, the love, love of God. God. And John 17 says the whole world is going to come when we love one Woo, another. Hallelujah. Now there's, hallelujah. A, there's another passage that I want you to read. And this is from uh, Timothy, mm -hmm. uh, first Timothy. And, and it talks about, we have a goal. That's you have a goal. I have a goal. We all have the same goal about whatever we do. Whatever we do, the goal of it. Listen, mm -hmm. the goal of whatever we do is this one thing. Read it, please. But the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. Some people have strayed from these things and have turned aside to fruitless discussion. Okay. I think it's mm -hmm. The goal of everything we do should be love. Oh, and you might think, well, but uh, my pastor's preaching about other things that, that don't lead me to love. It, it's about building a bigger ministry or building a bigger church or building a bigger, bigger building or, or doing this or doing that. Is it going to lead to love? I mean, it's all about yeah. love. That's the goal. It's not about a big ministry. It's not about a big building. It is about love. Hallelujah. Everything Hallelujah. we should do. That's the goal of everything. Amen. Because that's how the world is going to be reached. It's by the love of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Not because we fear him, but because we love him. Amen. Because of who he is and he first loved us. Hallelujah. 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 That's really good. But you know, uh, there, there's a passage in 1 Corinthians that said, if we don't have love, 1 Corinthians 13, and you're all familiar with it. Uh, if, we, if we don't have love, 1 Corinthians 13, if we don't have love, it's all nothing. I can give everything mm -hmm. away. I can, uh, uh, I can preach. I, I can do all of these other things. But if I don't have Love, it's nothing. Jerry, do we have your... If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a, a clinking cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I could move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions to charity, and if I surrender my body so that I may glory, but do not have love, it does me no good. Hallelujah. I think that's a good, way, a good way to end this message. We have to have love. If we're going to reach our neighbor, if we're going to reach our family members, if we're going to reach the world, it's going to be with love. It's not about... Uh, uh, because faith without love is nothing. Mm. Faith is energized. It's works, works by, by love. love. That's Galatians 5, 6. Love. Hallelujah. So that's the reason to begin this series with love, to begin revival. And what I see uh, in many places is lacking some of these things. Amen. But Amen. when Jacob 
was revived. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. When he was revived hallelujah. Hallelujah. in his spirit, in his heart, then he changed from the natural person of Jacob the deceiver to the spiritual to person, person, Israel. Prince, Prince with God. Prince with God. And that's what revival's about. It's changing. <laughs> taking off the old hallelujah, hallelujah. putting on Christ oh. it's not about uh, big uh, numbers of people this is about a change a change of heart and then that's the change of behavior uh, that comes out of that because we'll be radically changed but not only that uh, it begins with a one and a two and a few here and there and then we begin to see uh, reformation and changes and improvement mm -hmm. in our families, in our mm -hmm. family situations, and, and in our communities, and in, a, in our uh, cities and nations. Our cities and nation. uh, it all starts with revival where people are radically changed by the love of God. And that's your goal. Whatever Hallelujah. you do, Hallelujah. whatever God has called you to do, your goal is love to express mm -hmm. the love of Christ. Thank you for being here.